Welcome. You are listening to The Creative Spark. My name is G. Brian Benson, and I'm an award-winning author, project coach, actor, TEDx speaker, creative, and four-time Ironman triathlete. I love to creatively inspire and be inspired. And with each episode, I will be talking of authors, athletes, entrepreneurs, artists, and actors sharing their journey of success and learning how to find the joy and peace of mind that comes with stepping into one's own skin and going beyond anything they might previously have thought possible. I hope that their stories and strategies provide insight, tools, and empowerment to step up your creative game and help you live your best life. So without further ado, let's get going. I've been wanting to have a chat with today's guest for quite some time. I find his story interesting, inspiring, and empowering as someone who has achieved a lot of success, but also became self-actualized along his journey. The gentleman I'm talking about is Michael Bent. Michael is one of the most highly decorated amateur boxers in U.S. history, and in 1993, defeated Tommy Morrison with a first-round knockout to win the WBO Heavyweight Boxing Championship. He also survived an abusive father, a suicidal experience, and four days in a coma with swelling on his brain after his last fight. Post-boxing, Michael tapped into his creative side and began writing, directing, and acting in such movies as Ali, Public Enemies, numerous television shows, theater, and was featured in the Netflix series, Losers. There is so much to unwrap here. (laughs) Welcome, my friend. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you a lot, man. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, you're you're one of my favorite people, and I'm just starting to get to know you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really applaud your honesty and vulnerability that you shared on the the Netflix series, Losers. Mm. Um, It was very inspiring to me, and I'm sure a lot of other people who watched it especially men. And, right. you know, right. And I think that that's really important now is men are learning how to open up more and, and we need other strong men to give them permission to do the same. That's right. Was that hard to do for you to share no. your past like that? No, not at all. Uh, when I, um, I had the opportunity to be involved with this, um, with the Netflix docuseries of losers, um, you know, it's all about having friends and allies, man. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'd rather have like uh, more allies and friends, you know. So the way I got involved was that um, with that uh, project, um, a young lady, well, not young lady, a lady by the name of uh, Laura Drexel uh, of the Drexel family in Philadelphia, Drexel University. Oh, wow. You know, he, she and I were friends. And she calls me one day and says, Michael, um, how are you... Um, uh, about doing or participating in a uh, Tim Burns documentary about Muhammad Ali. I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how am I? I'm, 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 I'm interested. Yes, and please. So, <laughs> yeah. About a day or two later, I get a call from Kim Burns' son-in-law, David McMahon. Uh, David is married to Kim Burns' daughter, uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah Burns. And, and uh, so David and I spoke and they flew me out to a uh, to of New York to um, chat with them and watch footage of Muhammad um, as a mm. as a boxer and like you know and uh, speak about his uh, his stances uh, um, in the social um, sector mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. you know they just let me riff man and I've never had that kind of experience before you know just like just like you know uh, call what I see uh, unapologetically and they gave me free reign. And um, so, yeah, so that's how I got, like, you know, attached to that thing. And that thing has, like, you know, given me, like, a, a second or third life because, you know, it's, oh, it's yeah. really oh. fascinating material, man. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah. I, I find it so hard to believe that, you know, you kind of went into boxing begrud- begrudgingly, you know, due to yeah. your father and that you went as far as you did. I mean, all the way to the top without possibly truly loving it or wanting to do it. I mean, talk to me about that. Okay, that's interesting you mentioned that. Um, I think like, you know, I, I think like, you know, I don't think I know. Um, you know, being 55 years old, being 56 years old, whatever I am or whatnot, like, you know, I've come to the conclusion that, uh, you know, if, 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 uh, if I have a passion for something, mm-hmm. don't force it on me. You know, don't live vicariously through me, but like, you know, as a 14 year old, 15 year old, seven year old, five year old, like, you know, your father, like 
is driving this down your throat. And um, although like, you know, I was totally, um, you know, I was, I was, um, I was, uh, I was um, in line with that because like, you know, he's my father, he owns yeah. the house, he owns yeah. blah, blah, blah. He, he like, you know, it's like, you know, he was in control. But once I got outside of myself, I'm like, you know, once I started traveling um, as a member of the USA boxing team mm-hmm. and I'm traveling to Russia, to uh, um, to uh, Sweden, to um, you know Germany, I'm like my man. Like this is a friggin' education, and mm-hmm. you know my father, like you know, never realized that, but I realized it. So you know, my point is this: just because you don't like something, it doesn't mean you can't find value in something yeah. in that yeah. something. You know, and that's what sparked me, man. Because like you know, um, once again, like you know, I never wanted to box. Like I, you know, um, Muhammad Ali. Um, was my hero growing up. There was Muhammad Ali and a baseball player named Chris Chambliss. Yeah, and yeah. Was, and like, there we go. And those were my two favorite human beings of all time, bro. <laughs> um, and like, you know, and but like, you know, as a boxer, like, you know, you had to have someone like, you had to have a model. Mm-hmm. And my model was Muhammad. And, um, and my father, like, you know, um, he was a big Muhammad Ali fan, but like, you know, um, he would, he wouldn't, he wouldn't call him by, he would, when he would talk about Muhammad Ali, he would call him Cassius Clay. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, um, uh, you, you know, into my, into my teens, when I got, you know, when I got kind of conscious, I felt that was like disrespectful, but like, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't have the boss to like, you know, check my father. Cause like, you know, he's my father. And at that point in my life, like, you know, I wasn't going to question him. I'll say, like, you know, why do you think you call this man Muhammad Ali? I mean, Cassius Clay when his name is Muhammad Ali. But like, you know, that's a whole other conversation, man. But um, uh, but like, you know, um, so when I, um, you know, got to the point where I saw how. How travel, how being an athlete can like, you know, change the uh, trajectory of like, you know, one's life, I'm like, my man, like, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. You know, once again, like, you know, travel, I'm a high school dropout. I dropped out in um, high school and I went to regular high school in in New York, um, aviation high school, which at that time was one of the top, like, you know, high schools in the state. And I dropped out when I made the USA boxing team. And uh, so I go home to my father and say, like, you know, um, I just dropped out of school. Mm-hmm. And um, he said, "Great." Well, he didn't wow. say great. Like he, believed, he didn't say great. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, that's an exaggeration. Like you know, he was okay with it because I was a member of the USA boxing team, yeah. and yeah. like you know, my school was was uh, conflicting with my my uh, my uh, my traveling with the USA boxing team. So he was like, you know, like you know, he was like, okay, great, do it. Like like you know, uh, do what you gotta do on the boxing side, man. Yeah. So in some ways, like boxing kind of gave you a little bit of separation and freedom from him also. Of, of, correct? Oh, I mean, yes, um, that's the uh, I think that's why I um, I was so successful subconsciously as an amateur fighter, mm-hmm. you know, because like, you know, the more you win, the more you're on the road. And I didn't want to be in the fucking house with this goddamn guy. <laughs> I despised yeah. him. And I knew he despised me. Mm. You know, but like, you know, like, you know, that being like, you know, uh, what it was like, you know, I, um, you know, being 56 years old, I get where my father's stuff came from. And like, mm. you know, my responsibility is to myself and to my son. And like, you know, I made a vow, like, you know, when, when uh, my son was born, like, you know, not to be the kind of father that my father was. Yeah. Period. You know. Wow. Boy, um, no, that's just fascinating. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's painful I mean, stuff. Like, but like, you know, like, you know, we have to, like, you know, we have to, like, you know, have the, um, have the, uh, the courage and empathy for ourselves and for others in order to, like, you know, uh, get to that second rung on the, on the ladder, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. if not, like, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you, Brian. Like, you know, um, if not for, like, you know. I have a lot of mentors in my life, a lot of allies in my mm-hmm, life, right? Mm-hmm. Um, chief among them, like, you know, Bert Sugar, 
Mm-hmm. It's a prolific, like, you know, journalist um, of boxing back in the 60s, 70s, 80s and whatnot, man. Um, he hired me for a job as a writer for one of his magazines, his yeah. last magazine, as a matter of fact. And like, you know, to to have somebody of that stature put put their stamp on you, you know, to uh, um, um, legitimize you, that was heavy for me. Oh, he- oh it would have been heavy for anybody. There we are. You know, that's like, you know, Ilya Kazan, like, you know, putting a stamp on you, like, if you're an actor. Yeah. You know, for yeah. me, like, you know, when Burt Sugar, like, you know, said, hey, you're a wonderful writer, man. Like, you know, write my magazine. That was him putting his stamp on me. Like, I'm like, I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, um, so like, you know, it was allies, man, like, you know, that gave me uh, things that my father couldn't. And I'm sure that that just probably continued to help you fuel you kind of maybe outside of, of, of some of the stuff that um, oh, absolutely. lingers when one goes through traumatic experiences like that's that. That's right. That's right. That's right. And the more I began to hang around people like, you know, Burt Sugar, like I had this wonderful boxing sponsor as an amateur. Mm-hmm. Um, his name was Shelly Finkel. I've um, heard he's of that big, name. Like, well, he's a biggie in the boxing world. But like, you know, back then, I mean, Shelly was always a biggie. You know, he came from the music world and blah, blah, blah. But like, you know, I got introduced to him by uh, a dear friend of mine whose name, whose name is Mark Breland. And Mark is like, you know, one of the great, Mark, in my estimation, is the greatest amateur boxer in the history of this country, mm. period. Uh, and, the, you know, so Mark was sponsored by Shelly Finkel and Shelly Finkel and Mark introduced me to a Shelly and, uh, you know, we just clicked. And I think like, you know, well, no, I know that my father, like, you know, he, th- he felt threatened by that, mm. you know? So like, you know, you know, that was my father's business. Like, you know, that's not my business. Mm. Every time like, you know, uh, Shelly would like uh, call me or, or, or like, you know, Shelly would send me to camp to like, you know, uh, um, so I can get educated on the craft of boxing. And, you know, I go to these camps for like, you know, six, seven weeks, man. Like, uh, and like, I'd come back home and my father would like, I would sense this, like, this era of resentment. Wow. I said, okay. All right. Like, you, you, you know, like, you, you know, I didn't like it. I couldn't put, like, you, I couldn't define it. I couldn't put it into words. But, like, you know, I knew what it was. I knew, sure. what, like, you know, I knew what, like, you know, resentment and, like, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and scorn of, um, uh, feels like. And that's what he was giving because, like, you know, he was resentful that like you know this guy Shelly Finkel was doing more for was doing more for me than he was able to do well it was just kind of mirroring to him what he wasn't doing for you bam that's right that's yep yep you know yeah. and now like you know now like you know it's it's just uh, not to cut you off but now yeah. I find it fascinating because like you know uh, as an actor, I can use that kind of, like, you know, that kind of uh, um, um, chemistry, man. <laughs> and a writer, yeah, that's where it is. Well, absolutely, which brings me, you know, to this point, I kind of feel like we're kindred spirits a little bit, because in addition to you being open to the self-growth process of, yeah. you know, lear- of, of learning how to truly step into your own skin and authentically be you, I mean, I've been working on that my whole life, yeah. but, you know, um, but we also both kind of started exploring and expressing ourselves creatively a bit later right. in our lives. Yeah. And so I know how exciting and alive it's made me feel, you know, as yeah. I started to lift that lid off and began to step out of my comfort zone and do things I had no idea were inside of me. When sure. did you realize that you wanted to do that? You express yourself through writing and acting. Okay. I love that question, my man. So <laughs> the spark for me, um, that uh, really um, opened the door to acceptance, to writing and acting. Cause like I became a writer first and an actor. Okay, so um, I, had the, I had a boxing manager, Stan Hoffman. Mm-hmm. And he was a big, like, you know, he was a biggie in the game. Uh, Stan passed away about a year ago. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, he was a really like, you know, he was a hard, hard, a hard driver, but a really sensitive cat. And we connected, period, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Stan, so after my last fight against uh, Herbie Hyde, where I got knocked out in like a 96-hour coma, yeah. where I, went, yeah. I got knocked out and put into a 96-hour coma, you know, I went back to, um, to, to, uh, to America, 
My last fight was in London, went back to America, you know, bought a house uh, in Pennsylvania and uh, would drive back and forth to New York to like, you know, because Stan had hired me as a, um, as a boxing trainer for his guys. Stan had like, you know, a camp of guys, uh, boxers and girls that actually. Okay. Uh, and uh, so like uh, one day um, we were uh, going to travel to, uh, to uh, Holland because Stan had a group of boxers in Holland who he wanted me to train or assistant train. So we go over there and, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't want to be there, honestly. You know, mm-hmm. I, love, I love travel love to meet different people, be in different environments, blah, blah, blah. But like, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to be there at that point because like, you know, it was boxing and being knocked out in my last pro fight, it was humiliating and you mm-hmm. feel like a loser mm-hmm. and like, you know, your, your, your spirit is broken. Yeah. And I did not want to confront people in that industry because I knew what they were saying about me when I left the, uh, the, the conversation. Look at that fucking bum. He got knocked mm-hmm. the fuck out by Tommy, by, by uh, Herbie Hyde. You know, you know, even if they never said it, that's what they're thinking subconsciously. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, so I thought, thought or think, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, so I go over there and, um, you know, I'm, I'm working with these athletes, pretty good boxers. And um, uh, I see Stan Hoffman. Um, I think this is, I think we have like maybe a break in training. Over the weekend, and I see Stan Hoffman, and he says, "Mike, uh, there's a uh, English reporter who wants to have an interview with you. You know, kind of like you know where what are, are they doing now? Kind of piece." Okay. Okay. Like, okay great. I'm like, just just like you know, like you know, where is he? So he tells me like you know where he is in the hotel, blah blah blah. So I go like you know in the uh, it was actually in the uh, in the uh, 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 the rec room of the hotel. So I walk into his rec room. And you know, a lot of equipment there, like like training equipment, blah blah. blah. And this guy is sitting down, and uh, and he says to me, "Hey, Michael, how you doing?" I'm like, "I'm good, man. What's up? What do you want to talk about?" And he says to me, "I'll never forget this." He says to me, uh, "Okay, so um, you don't want to be here, do you?" <laughs> and I look at him, and I said, "No, I don't, man." <laughs> and he says, uh, well, what do you want to do? And I say, what you're doing? Mm. Writing? Writing, yeah. Yeah. Start writing. You know what? And so, like, you know, I, I finished the uh, the two weeks or three weeks with the kid that I was working with in the Netherlands. Yeah. And uh, when, I, yeah. when I got home to my house in Pennsylvania, I made a phone call to uh, Mike Katz. Um, at that point, uh, Mike Katz was a, uh, I think Mike re- retired at that point, but like Mike Katz used to, well, I knew Mike Katz well because he was a, 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 a big time uh, A-list writer for the New York Daily News. Okay. And the Daily News at that point uh, sponsored the New York Golden Gloves. Which I won, like you know, four times, like you know, yeah. four times, blah blah blah, and uh, so I asked Mike. I said, Mike, like, how you doing, man? Blah blah blah. And Mike was like, you know, a straight shooter. Get to the goddamn point, man. What do you want? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay, I got it. okay, okay, Mike. Um, you know, I've, I've I've done some writing in the past, like you know, I put myself back in school and I've done some writing. Um, uh, if I wrote a piece on like uh, on a boxer, say Mark Breland. Uh, on his attempted comeback uh, after losing a match. Um, you think like, you know, you could run it in the, uh, or get it ran in the daily news. And Mike said to me like, hey man, check us out. If it's good, you have a chance. I'm not, I'm not like, you know, giving you any promises. Wow. Any hunger. Any hunger. <laughs> right? Okay. So at that Challenge point- Challenge accepted. Yeah, no, you, you're goddamn right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> damn right. Yeah. So at that point, um, once again, like, you know, I lived in the Poconos and my first trainer was a, per, a man named Emmanuel Stewart, who was a biggie, who was a, like, you know, who's like, you know, on, on Mount Rushmore uh, in terms of like, you know, um, his, uh, his, uh, his work as a, a boxing trainer. 
Mm. You know, so he's a Emmanuel Stewart was a big. He passed away as well. Uh, so I I got word that Emmanuel Stewart was working with my friend Mark Breland, not too far from me. They had a, you know had a boxing camp. So I drive up there, and I say to uh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, um, I mean, what do you feel about me uh, doing a piece on Mark Breland about like you know his uh, his his comeback? And he said like you know talk to him. Mm-hmm. So like you know, we sat. I sat down with Mark. Blah 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 blah. Like you know, I didn't want to do a fluff piece. Yeah. You know, a nice like a nice like you know blah 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 piece about like oh like you know how great he is. No no no. The no, fuck that. <laughs> Let me like just like you know. Let's get real. Deep dive into material. Yeah, yeah. Let's be real, man. And uh, so we had this. You know, me and Mark chatted about like losing, winning. You know, uh, how we feel about like you know people um, um, in that space that we are when we win or when we lose and. Uh, you know, he gave me gold, and uh, so I, you know, I crafted the material, and I sent it to um to uh, uh Mike Cash. Yep, and uh, <laughs> about a week later, it was in the friggin' Daily News. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit! <laughs> now, Mike Cash, once again, like Mike Cash, isn't gonna put the thing in the daily news if it was like you know somewhat um uh you know it wasn't great especially being the way he is i mean it's got to be right exactly no, like, no dude like you know you, you like you know you know you've been in la man you like you know my my acting coach was a guy named rick Edelstein, right okay and rick Edelstein reminded me of mike katz not because of the jewish thing not because of the jewish thing but like you know uh because like you know they were unapologetically fucking honest yeah you show up for work. You you like it. You do good work. You like it. you present good work. And if it's not good work, I'm I'm going to call you on your bullshit. That was hard for me at first because I was a little soft and like I'd never done that before. And it's just I like it kind of hurt my feelings. It's like oh, of course, my God. yes, it no, really of course, you up, right? yes, yeah. But like you know, me being a, a, an athlete, particularly a boxer, I was used to that kind of criticism. Yeah, I didn't like it though. I said I liked it. But like, you know, I was used to it. Plus, like, you know, with my father, like, you know, I mean, she like, I mean, like, you know, I, you know, I was used to like, you know, walking that tightrope, man. Like, you know, but like, you know, I knew, you know, something like, you know, it just sparked in my head, man. Like, you know, mm. about like, you know, people being critical of our work as, as artists. If, if, if I don't, if I don't believe in you, you can't fucking criticize, you can't criticize me. Yeah. Fuck you. I have to believe in you, you know. Yeah. Rick Elstein, whew, this motherfucker. Rick was a beast, man. And I remember, like, you know, at one point, like, you know, Rick and I got into a little thing. Like, you know, you know, men, like, well, the, Rick was like, you know, like, maybe like, you know, 30 years or 40 years older than me, but like, you know, you know, he says something, man, to me, like, in class, man. And, um, mm. and uh, I remember, like, you know, I was, I was, um, I was sitting with my wife, man, at that time. And he he passed by the restaurant we were sitting in L.A. Um, and Lisa, like, you know, my wife Lisa said, like, oh, there's Rick. And she had no idea that we had, like, conflict, man. Mm. And, um, and he saw me. Somehow he saw me, man. And then he, like, you know, so he, he calls me outside. And he says, like, you know. Why didn't you, like, you know, why didn't you call me back, blah, blah, blah. Because, like, you know, when Rick calls you. You have to fucking call him back. <laughs> he was like, you know, like, you know, like, you know, uh, he was like essentially teaching us in his class about like, you know, how the industry is. Yeah. It wasn't about him. Like, you know, that's an interesting thing. Like, you know, if, if, if a producer calls you, if a cast is about to call you, you fucking call them back. Yeah. He was teaching me that, but like, you know, I didn't know that at that point, man. And I remember like, you know, he like, you know, he's, he's saying to me something, he says something to me and like, you know, that like, that like uh, got under my skin, man. I said, "Fuck you, man. You don't talk to me like that, man." And dude, I the remember. Kid from Queens. <laughs> no, no, no. But I remember. I remember, like you know, the look in his eyes, man. The look in his eyes said, "Wow, man. You don't get it." Mm-hmm. And you know, like you know, I'm, I'm like you know, and I remember, like you know, feeling fucking so bad in that moment because this guy believed in me. Mm-hmm. And I'm pushing him away. 
Wow. Just, yeah. Oh my dude. I mean, like, wow. Yeah. Did you ever rectify that with him? Oh, absolutely. Rick. <laughs> okay. Rick good. Was God, <laughs> dude, listen, Rick was God to me, man. Rick Edelstein was the guy. I like, you know, I mean, let me, let me, let me, let me do some like, you know, name dropping and shit if I can. Yeah. <laughs> Rick Edelstein is responsible for discovering Barbara Streisand. Oh, wow. Yes. Uh, Rick used to go work at some restaurant in Manhattan. I think, like, you know, uh, I forget the name of the restaurant, man, but like, it was like, you know, some like, you know, jazzy, blah, blah restaurant. Mm -hmm. And one, one afternoon, Rick is there, like, he was bartending. He was like doing some cleaning up, blah, blah, blah. And Miles David has just like, had just like, did like a concert or like, you know, like a, a performance there the night before. Wow. So Rick is cleaning up and Miles Davis's band is practicing. Miles Davis and his band is practicing, like, you know, for the next, like, you know, for, for uh, like, you know, the uh, tonight's a gig. And this young white chick wakes in. This young white chick walks in, Barbara Streisand, right? Well, who we now know is Barbara Streisand. Right. right. And she goes up to Miles Davis. She walks right past Rick and says, like, you know, oh, hey, like, you know, I'd like to, like, you know, sing a song, like, you know, and maybe audition for you guys. And she walks like, you know, and she walks to um, uh, uh, Miles and shit. And she says, hey, uh, Mr. Davis, can I sing a song for you, blah, blah, blah. And that's pretty ballsy. <laughs> <laughs> of course, man. And like, according to Rick, like, you know, Miles was like, you know, get the fuck out of my goddamn face. That was Miles Davis. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, get the fuck out of my goddamn face, right? So like, you know, Miles went outside. Um, um, and and uh, he like, you know, I think he smoked a joint. Goes outside, smokes a joint, blah, blah, blah. And then Rick <laughs> turns to the band members and says, hey, guys, uh, do me a favor. You know, just like, you know, give the girl a shot. Give her like five minutes. And she went up on stage and she like, you know, grabbed the microphone. The rest is fucking history, bro. Wow. So like, you know, Rick, like Rick was like, I mean, Rick, like, you know, Rick, um, Rick and Barbara Streisand. I remember Rick's talk. I remember Rick talking about Barbara Streisand, man. What's that film that Barbara Streisand directed, man? Um, Yentl. Okay, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. In the 80s or something? Or yes, yes, or... yes. I remember Rick, man, like, you know, um, um, telling us, like, you know, that he had, he and Barbara had conflict, a bit of conflict, you know, because, like, you know, you know it's, it's, it's just, like, it's creativity, blah, blah, blah. I think I'm right. I think you're wrong, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, <laughs> like, you know, you know I mean, that, I mean, that guy, to spend, like, I spent, like, um, 13 years studying on the Rick man, like, you know, wow. And that, wow. Yes. And that person gave me the most valuable education I have ever received in be it boxing, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, great boxing trainers, right? Yeah. Such yeah. as, such as Georgie Benton, they, um, um, Georgie Benton and another great boxing trainer who I had, who doesn't get his props. His name is Audie Cintron. He was a black uh, uh, Puerto Rican uh, uh, man, and he was my like he was the chief guy, like you know, to uh, develop my craft, man, as an amateur. Mm -hmm. And he was a truth teller, but like you know, he doesn't get the kind of like you know acclaim that like you know, these other guys do because like because uh, he wasn't connected, mm -hmm. you know, he was like he wasn't a big star. But um, my point is that um, uh, when I um, and I was studying, like, you know, with these great, like, masters of the craft in boxing, they would, would, uh, would, um, would map out how you get something accomplished, right? Like, how do you throw a left hook? How do you throw a right hand, right? But okay. when, I got, when I got in front of Rick Edelstein, <laughs> Rick was able to articulate uh, why we throw a left hook or why we say to your wife as a character fuck you or why we say like you know to to like you know to, to get uh, the meaning behind it exactly that's if you don't then it's not really believable right it's, it's not it's not believable like you know it's not believable like you know it's more valuable in life if you know what you are at effect of mm -hmm. right because like you know i know i'm fucked up i'm damaged but I'm aware of it mm. and I process it every goddamn day. I'm not trying to make myself better or worse. I'm just trying to like stay in the moment.
Sure. And accept, like, you know, what, what, what I can say. I'm, I'm not trying to be better. I don't know what better is. Well, it seems, to me, though, that, it seems to me that you've done an incredible job of, through self-awareness and discipline and what have you, just to, to overcome a lot of what you Brian, went through. My friend, Brian Champ, like, uh, I wish I could say it was all me. But once again, dude, like, you know, um, the thing that allowed me to truly, truly accept myself yeah. was the arts, man. My first, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I, um, not to cut you off, but like, you know, when I retired from boxing after getting knocked out by Herbie Hyde and putting in like, you know, that cold, cold six day, uh, that four day coma, 96 hours, man. You know, um, after that, um, you know, I was searching. Well, in the, in, the docu- in the documentary Losers, you said you felt relieved, like because you knew you oh, wouldn't absolutely. be fighting anymore. Oh, I do. I, I never wanted to fight in the first place, man. I wanted to be a baseball player. Oh, yeah, yeah. you and me, you yeah. and me both. Did yeah. you? Did your soul finally feel free when you started writing and acting? Oh, dude, it was miraculous, man. Um, um, the first piece. Well, yeah, like the first piece I I ever like you know started to um well. The first piece I ever had published was like, you know, the thing about Mark Breland mm-hmm. uh, and Emmanuel Stewart. But the piece that really like um, uh, um, blew me away and like, you know, obviously blew a lot of other people away was a piece uh, that was uh, presented in the uh, Netflix docudrama. I mean, docuseries. Oh, the one to Bird Sugar. The, yes, about, yes. The surviving uh, a Knockout or the Knockout one. Right, right. Anatomy of a Knockout, man. Yes. And, and do, whoo, boy, let me tell you something, man. <laughs> let me tell like, you know, I remember sitting there, I remember writing this piece, right? Uh, what made me, okay, so the way that whole thing came about, let me just like, you know, uh, um, uh, um, fast forward to a, 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 a thing. That piece is responsible for getting me the role of Sonny Liston in Ali. Talk to me about that because I, I wanted to ask you about that as well. Okay, Obviously. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ron Shelton, uh, who's a biggie, who, yeah. who we all know, the great Ron Shelton, um, uh, he contacted me one day. I had no idea how he got my phone number. But he's Ron Shelton, so he, he can do that. <laughs> <laughs> right? And he called me, he said, Michael, like, you know, I read your piece, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's fantastic, blah, blah, blah. He said, um, uh, if you're ever out in L.A., um i know some people who are involved in the in the production of an all of a muhammad ali project if you're ever out here i'll arrange for you to have an audition maybe you can coach will smith blah 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 or play one one of the uh boxes in the film i don't know but like if you're ever out here call me and dude, um, did you fly out there the next day? <laughs> no, not the next day. Like, you know, I was in New York, like, you know, at that time I was in New York, like, you know, I was still like, you know, in that phase of like, you know, post-traumatic trauma, man. Mm. So like, you know, I was trying to like find where the fuck I belonged, you know, and, and, uh, Rick, Rick Ellerstein would always say like, you know, the only way that we can like, you know, uh, uh overcome like, like trauma mm-hmm. is to replace it with something that we love. Mm. if that makes sense yeah it made sense to me yeah that's it you know so 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 it was about like you know maybe a month month and a half and i had a dear friend man like you know when i got back to you to, to, to the east coast and i was living in pennsylvania i met this woman like you know um i, I had a dear friend uh, who worked at hbo Artie curry he's he passed away like you know a couple of years ago as well. And Audie and I were like, you know, would talk boxing, talk life, blah, blah, blah. And one day I was going into his um uh his office at HBO. Um I met this uh uh this uh um she wasn't an assistant but like you know I met this woman like you know who worked at HBO blah 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 we became friends and uh and at some point like you know she and I um uh started a uh, a short film production company together. And we would do like, you know, a couple of short films, blah, blah, blah. We had no idea what the fuck we, do, we were doing. <laughs> no, I, well, I didn't have any idea what, what we were doing. You know, but like- It was I really exciting. Like, exactly. I love the energy, man. Of like, just like, you know, trying to tell a story. Mm-hmm. And um, so uh, about, uh, wow, 
about uh, maybe a, about four or five months after that, I got the call from Ron Shelton. And uh, Ron, um, he said, like, you know, Mike, I love the piece, blah, blah, blah. And so, okay, so, so, so I'll tell you this, like, I need to share this story with you. Yeah. Uh, Bert Sugar was the editor and, and uh, like, you know, the, uh, the top dog of this magazine, uh, Bert Sugar's Fight Game, right? Yeah. That yeah. Anatomy of a Knockout is published in. I go to so so Burke Sugar gives me a call one day, and he says, "Michael, how you doing?" <laughs> I'm like, "I'm good, Burke. What's up, man?" <laughs> said, "Well, Michael." And Burke had this like you know, really like you know flamboyant voice, man. Well, Michael, I have a, have an idea. I'm like, what, "What's up, Burke?" <laughs> I'm gonna assign you to write uh, a piece that only you can write about. So you're going to assign me a piece that only I can write about. Okay, what's that piece, Bert? You have to write. You're going to write about getting knocked out and and and, and knocking someone out. I'm like, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, the knocking someone else, now the knocking out someone else part, I'm fine with. I, I was fine with that, right? Obviously. But yeah. the getting knocked out part, I was on the edge, man. You got to be vulnerable there. Dude, but like, you know, I had, I had like, you know, I wasn't able to like, you know, embrace that yet and like you know when i tell you like you know in the next like two or three minutes it's gonna blow your fucking mind it, <laughs> it's an actual fact it happened man so you know uh a, a couple of weeks go by and every like you know a couple of weeks like you know burp would like give me a call and i wouldn't return his phone calls because he was like, hey michael how you coming along with the piece about like you know you getting knocked out i'm like god damn man like you know i'm not trying to fucking expose myself like that bro I know I never told him that, but like that's what I'm thinking, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So one night, like you know, I mean, one day I get a phone call, Michael. Like, uh, um, this is you know what this is. This is Bert Sugar. Uh, meet me at the <laughs> at the uh, at the small arena in Madison Square Garden uh, for the finals of the Golden Gloves and blah 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 blah. Okay, so like you know, I, I didn't know that he was. Um, I didn't know why he was inviting me there. So I go there, right? And yeah. I see Bert, like, you know, I see Bert because, like, you know, I know Bert likes to wear, like, these fancy-ass fedoras and shit. Remember that? Bert Sugar? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So he was, I like, I recognize the goddamn fedora, right? And I go stand right behind him, and he turns around, and he looks at me, and he gives me, like, one of those wise guy looks like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh so, 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 oh, so you're fucking here. Okay, nice. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he didn't say that, but, like, you know, that's the vibe, right? Um, and like beside him to his right was a short guy. I had no, I had no idea who this guy was, man. No fucking idea. But, but, but like, you know, I knew who he was, I knew who he was, but like, I, I didn't know that was him, brother. Okay. So, so like, you know, Bert turns around, he looks at me, gives me like, you know, this fucking like, look like, yeah, this fucking guy. Yeah. You gotta write the fucking piece, son. You gotta write it. And he turns around and then... <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I swear on my son, man, this short guy, right, the white cat, comes like maybe fucking in his late 70s and shit. The short guy comes, like he, he turns around, right, and takes maybe two steps towards me and shit and puts his fucking finger in my fucking chest, man. And he says, and he had a stammer. My father, my father stammers. Mm. I stammer. My mother, my goddamn mother stammers, right? My whole goddamn, well, not my whole family, but like, I like it. I stammer. And this guy had a goddamn horrible stammer. And he points his goddamn finger in my choice. Michael, write the fucking piece. I swear to God, right? Write the fucking piece. And like, you know, like, you know, the funny thing is, I didn't feel offended by that shit because I know it was it came it was coming from like you know a place of encouragement like you know and the guy I vaguely recognized the fucking guy who was it <sighs> okay <laughs> okay so it was like you know so like you know so like you know like you know uh, 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 let's uh, let's uh, stay in this moment for a second 
So we're like, you know, we're still at the garden watching the fights, blah, blah, blah. And like, you know, I, I decided to leave, man. You know, because like, you know, that's 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 some heavy shit. Mm-hmm. Getting like, you know, poked in the fucking chest by some cat, right? It was heavy. And I, I hop on the train to head back to goddamn Queens, blah, blah, blah. Go back to my spot. And, um, and um, I get a phone call the next morning from Bert. And uh, no, 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 no. Uh, as I was walking out, I, I bumped into like, you know, uh, the owner of Gleason's Gym in Brooklyn, right? Okay. And he said to me, Mike, you okay? I'm like, yeah, man, just, 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 just fucking guy just like <laughs> poked me in the fucking chest. And he said to me, well, you know, I mean, you know that, you know who that is, right? No. Bud Schulberg. Who's Bud, who's Bud Schulberg? Who's Bud Schulberg? Yes. Brian, champion, you have officially lost your goddamn Hollywood card, my friend. No. <laughs> no. No, don't take but it from me. Who is Bud I, Schulberg? I, I, I mean, I feel really like I'm in tune with a lot of stuff. I've never heard that name before. Okay. Okay. Well, like, you know, when, 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 <laughs> when I, when, when, okay. Uh, Let me Google yeah. it right now while we're doing no, this. No, 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 Bud Schulberg is responsible for, he was a writer for On the Waterfront. Oh, my. Yeah. Bud Schulberg um, was like Hollywood royalty, man. Wow. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he won the Academy Award for, uh, you know, On the Waterfront, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, like, you know, when uh, my guy from Gleason, like, you know, told me who he was, I'm like, holy. Because like, I, 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 even back then, I was like, you know, a Hollywood fucking head. I was an acting head. Well, like, you know, I was like, you know, interested in, in acting, man. Mm-hmm. So I knew who Bud Schubert was. I'm like, holy fuck, Bud Schubert? And later on, like, I, I found out that Bud had, uh, um, had invested in several fighters as professionals back in the days. Oh, wow. And that's where, like, you know, On the Water from came from. Yes. Yeah. He was a fan yeah. of the game. Exactly. So, so once again, like, you know, so I'm back in my house, bro, and I lock myself in a fucking room and I just like start banging out like, you know, fucking anatomy of a knockout. Wow. And, yeah. And like, you know, I gave myself permission, like, you know, not to give a fuck. You know, and, and there, at one point, like, you know, um, there was, there was, um, you know, I was, I was stuck on like, you know, well, I wasn't stuck. I was just reluctant. I was, I was mm-hmm. scared. And I said to myself, like, the only way that I'm going to authentically tell this goddamn story or tell, like, you know, fractions of the story is to pull out the goddamn VC, uh, uh, um, via, what's that thing called? VCR? V- VC- uh, yeah, VCR. Right, 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 right. VHS the only way case. Is to, right. The only way is to pull out, uh, the, the only way to authentically tell this goddamn story is to pull out the goddamn VCR from my goddamn closet and watch it. And rewatch it, and rewatch it, and I pulled out the goddamn VCR, man, of my fl- last fight with Herbie High, where I got fucking smothered and and like you know fucking decimated yeah. Yeah. and demolished. I watched that fight, bro, and you know um, what I came away with? Hmm. A feeling of um, of uh, the fucking phoenix rising. Wow, did you feel like yes. you kind of freed yourself a little yes. bit? Yes, bam, Ex- bam, exactly, yes. Wow. Yes, that's right, yep. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it was um, it was the most fucking amazing. It's healing. Moment. Yeah, man. Yeah, but like, you know, see, see, it's healing. But like, you know, that's the one thing that, uh, mm. that uh, the community doesn't share with us, man. You have to dig into and, and be available to like you know um to uh um uh directly oh, stare into your failures bro yeah doesn't mean fucking like you know it's, it's not the end of your goddamn life no and it doesn't mean that it needs to be who you are going forward exactly. it's just like you just kind of doesn't just, define you no that's it that's but it you, you, mm. yeah so yeah. that's that's yeah. awesome i mean yeah so you're starting to feel lighter and lighter doing these different projects, starting to get into acting a little bit. You know, with Ali, it almost seems like that was the perfect 
opportunity for you to morph from your past into, into your future, you acting as a boxer. I mean, yeah, you know, back to right. boxing is your past life and then acting is your new life. Yes. And you got to play a boxer. And so I yes. don't know, was that, is that the case? I mean, did it feel no, like no, you're you know? right. I mean, you know, I mean, like, you know, um, um, like, uh, uh, I was just writing something, uh, a few minutes ago before you called about, um, mm -hmm. acting, uh, I mean, like, dude, um, every boxer, every goddamn boxer wants to be an actor. Every goddamn <laughs> actor wants to be a goddamn boxer. Right. You know, I mean, like, I, I like, you know, Sonny Liston. I'm just reading. I was just uh, rereading this uh, this uh, autobiography of um, of Sonny Liston. Like you know, okay. he was like getting work who in you, LA. Who you played in the movie Ali. That's right. Who I played the music in the who I had the pleasure um, or the honor to play in the movie Ali, man. Because mm -hmm. um, you know um, they um, during the whole like Ali thing, uh, they had like a substantial big name actor to play him, mm -hmm. like Ving Rhames, right? And like, you know, Ving would have just like, you know, like Ving, like, you know, he, you know, he would have done wonderful as Sonny Liston. You know, I think the only thing is that uh, Michael Mann, you know, he wanted authenticity. Yeah. With regards to like, you know, the, pre uh, the, uh, the training preparation for Will Smith. And Will Smith was hitting motherfuckers. <laughs> You know, uh, and Will Smith was with, and Will Smith was getting hit by motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So Will really learned to fight, my friend. Not box to fight. Mm. Boxing is like you know, fighting is is, is is. I mean, boxing is a result of fighting. He learned to fight. I don't know, like you know, I've, and like you know, and I've said this in everything, in every interview, like you know, uh, I've had about like you know, an experience, man. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any goddamn actor. You can quote me this. You can quote me on this goddamn thing. There's not an actor who would have put himself in that position uh, to go that deep into mm -hmm. the role in the preparation phase, like Will Smith did. My man, he sparred with cats who didn't give a fuck about who he was. Wow. And would challenge Will because Michael Mann specifically said if if Will Smith makes a mistake as Muhammad Ali and you're playing Joe Frazier or you're playing George Foreman or you're playing Sonny Listen, you make him pay. <laughs> That's what Michael Mann indirectly said to like, you know, the cast of boxers who were who were uh, all all professional champions. Wow. Yes. Wow is right. Yes. That's why I love Michael Mann, bro. He's a, he's an, he's an authentic truth teller. Like, you know, like, look, if Will gets hurt, I mean, like, you know, you know. Obviously, you don't want him to get hurt. You don't want, <laughs> right, right. But like, you know, you don't want him to, like, you know, to skate through the production either. No. Not like, you know, having the scars or the wounds that uh, Muhammad uh, uh, had and overcame. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, wow. the yeah. yeah. Were you? I know that since you had, you know, that that injury from your last fight, were you worried yeah. about getting hit in the head a little bit? I'm glad you asked me that, bro. Uh, that whole time, that whole moment, my friend. Really, honestly, um, you know, not to get all sentimental, man. Mm -hmm. I love Muhammad, man. Um, I I love what he stood for, what he did in the ring athletically. No one's ever, like you know, no one's gonna be ever to do what he did like in the ring again. And more importantly, like you know, Awkward. I love what he did like you know, I love what he did like you know socially. Mm -hmm. You know, he woke people up and he made like you know, and he threatened people. Well, not threatened, but like you know, he challenged people in the right spirit, man. Sure. Um, yeah. So, uh, um, when I was uh, offered the role and like I, I found that like you know I got something listed and I I knew that like you know during the training phase of like uh, during the phase of preparation like you know I'm going to get hit I was open to it and and like and I was I was I was like cool you know I was concussed uh, maybe what uh, maybe uh, six years prior to that and mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, those kind of conditions neurologically never leave you but. Real talk, man. I was, I was like, fuck it. If like, if I get hurt, I get hurt, man. Because I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm paying homage to Muhammad. And I remember wow. like, you know, being on. I remember like, you know, going running with. Um, I remember like, uh, Will and I were up in uh, 
he took me up to his uh, place in Aspen for the Christmas break. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and this, like, I mean, we got to be super duper goddamn competitive, man. <laughs> so, like, you know, to the, yeah, yeah. And sometimes, like, you know, it's like, you know, I mean, like, you know, I mean, when you're a major fucking star, you know, you can do shit. I'm, I'm, I wasn't a major fucking star. I'm not a major goddamn star. You know, but like, you know, uh, but like, you know, he always like, you know, like uh, left the back door open, man. Like, you know, if I wanted to say something or do something like, you know, my man, like, you know, I get it because mm-hmm. it's, it's all about competition and he got it. And um, I remember um, uh, uh, running, man, and um, uh, we, were spying, no, no, we were spying at one point in, um, in Aspen, man, and he, and he hit me with a shot. And it, it 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 legitimately hurt me, but like you know, I you know I'm I'm a boxer, I can I can play it off, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and you know I and I have a thought like if I fucking die on set, I'm good with that. Yeah, good. Well, probably because I mean, in some ways, you felt like you were finally living your life, and you could die happy now. That's right. Ways. Exactly. That's right. You're being true to yeah. yourself. That's it. That's it. That's it. Bingo. You got it, man. Yeah. Wow. You know it's. Uh, I didn't mean, I don't know if I cut you off there. Sorry. Um, you know, it's That's interesting. Good. You mentioned yeah. how like uh, actors want to be boxers, boxers want to be actors. Yeah. Something about being the heavyweight champion, it's almost like royalty in America. I mean, you know, the. Well, it used to of, be. Of, well, as again, I mean, yeah, it's not as, it's different now, but I mean, right. it's like the, the long list of all the, you know, the heavyweight champs. So in some ways, I mean, that kind of just. Um, do you know, when people see you and meet you, I mean, do they. Uh, are they looking at you as that or are they kind of looking at is the, the new Michael or a little bit of both or, I mean, you know what I mean? Um, well, it all depends, man. Like, you know, I don't, I don't like it. I mean, you know, I've, I've, um, uh, I'm like from the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not saying this out of arrogance and shit, but like, I'm not, I'm from the, uh, the, uh, Robert De Niro, like, you know, school the motherfucking, like, you know, not giving a fuck. You know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. if you recognize me and see me, like, you know, I respect it. But, like, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I don't care about that. Like, him, because, like, you know, that whole Bakken thing, that was yesterday. Sure. Sure. That doesn't define me. You know, sure. great, like, you know, I had, a, I had a great, like, you know, people like, you know, say, well, oh, Mike, like, you know, great fight with my, Tommy Morrison, my man. It's like, it's like, I had a great moment against Tommy Morrison. Yeah. You know, yeah. it happens, man. You know? Yeah. But, um, I try not, you know, not to, uh, not to. Well, no, I don't try. I do. No, like, I, I don't you know, think you do. I know you're just you. You're, you're a very down to earth person. Yeah. I just try. To be, you know, <laughs> and sometimes it goes left, but like you know, that's you know, that's part of the thing. Sure, sure. Mm. We're um, we're kind of winding it down. What? Give me a few things that you've learned from acting. Oh boy. And, and, um, Give you a few things I've learned from acting. Yeah. Oh man, shit. Or, I mean, or better yet, maybe what what are a couple of things that are similar between boxing and acting? Uh, boxing. Uh, you, you know, you have something to be about like, the know, private and public thing. You know, where you're right, right, right. But like, you know, I think one of the primer, one of the primary things uh, with boxing and acting, mm-hmm. boxes like you know the um, uh, the subtext. In the boxes punch, um, you know, I've been cursing the whole goddamn like you know half hour, so like I'm gonna curse again. When <laughs> Muhammad Ali throws a jab at George Foreman or Sonny Liston, he's saying "fuck you" with that left jab, right? Yeah. And when uh, um, uh, Marlon Brando is getting into it with like you know with uh, Blanche Dubois. Mm-hmm. It's streak on the end of fire. Uh, like he's like, you know, he's saying "fuck you" to her, but he's like, he's like, not in the same language, but it's the yeah. same language, right? Sure. And I learned that. I learned that. Um, are you familiar with the uh, the actress uh, Anna Devere Smith? Anna Devere Smith. Anna Devere Smith. Oh, no, I'm not. Well, you, I will look her up. Well, oh, you will. Well, 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 I think you are. Yeah, yeah. Look her up and like you know. So I trained Anna for like maybe like fifteen years. I was in, in L.A. Man, and we would have these. This is why, man. This is why, like, I love the fucking arts, man. Hmm. I mean, this woman. Oh my god, dude. I I I love this woman. Hmm. We would have the. We would go like on these, like you know, like 
hour long jog or workout sessions, blah, blah, blah. And I'm training her, you know, um, to like, you know, like skip rope, blah, 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 like defend herself. And she's like, like, you know, we're having a conversation about fucking like everything, man. And uh, she said to me like, you know, you know, Mike, when a boxer throws a jab, like with conviction, it's, it's, it's essentially saying, fuck you. I'm like, holy shit, yeah. <laughs> no, because like, you know, like everything is a language, right? Like, yeah. and, and, and like you know, if, if I'm doing a love scene, blah, 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 there's a certain language there. If I'm like, you know, arguing with, my, with like, you know, a character who's playing my father and like, you know, there's a language there. In boxing, there's a subtextual language, man. Mm -hmm. If I'm throwing a fucking jab, like, you know, at Tommy Morrison, or Tommy Morrison is throwing a hook at me, he's saying, fuck you. And I'm yeah, saying, fuck yeah. you with a jab. This same language. I mean, if you if one's doing it right, acting wise, I mean, they're both, they're both very raw and primal. Yeah, exactly. That's right. It's, it's, <laughs> it's coming from within and it's, and it's bringing everything that you had that's led you to that moment of how you're that's interacting right. with somebody. That's right. And it's cathartic, man. Oh, I, it's cathartic. amen to that. That was so, <laughs> acting has been so cathartic for me. I cannot. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, that's, mm. you, you, you know, when I did like, you know, I'm not going, I know what like, you know, pushing time, but like, you know, when I did my first uh, um, uh, play, uh, I played the grave maker in Hamlet. Dude, mm -hmm. wow! <laughs> Talk about on fire! Oh my, like no, no, I wasn't like the character wasn't on fire, but like I was on fire internally. I'm like, holy shit! I'm playing fucking Shakespeare. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. No, it's so awesome. I mean, I just know for me, I mean, we we all have a lot of pain and stuff inside of us that wants to come out, and, and not very right. many of us are able to do it. And so, if no. acting in some ways gave, gives one permission, exactly, precisely. To, that's it. You know, that's it. Like, you know, and like, you know, it, 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 like, you know, acting gives one permission, like, you know, on the stage or on set, but like, you know, it also gives one permission to like, you know, embrace empathy, man. Because like, you know, mm -hmm. we can't all like, you know, do what we do. No, we can't all do what we love doing, man. Like, you know, and that's a, that's a gift. And we have to be conscious of that. And we have to be empathetic for those, like, you know, we don't get the, like, uh, uh, the opportunity. Absolutely. Do you do you prefer theater or or film TV? Well, uh, film and TV uh, plays uh, pays the bills. Yeah. But if I had my brothers, <laughs> man, you know, if I had my brothers, bro, I'd be I'd be directing theater in um, um, in Switzerland. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And or acting in theater like productions in Switzerland. Yeah. You hear that, Switzerland? I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh my god um i can't thank you enough this has been fascinating and and i want to leave us with a quote that you sent to me that i loved and it's really i think appropriate for for you know your experience and and right. um, it's it's by stella adler the, the ah. infamous Ooh, actor come on bring it on come on life beats down the soul Right. But art reminds us we have one. God. And that's that's you. Yes. That's you Still in a nutshell, right? right? Yeah. But no, no, but well, 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 it's me in a nutshell, but like, you know, without the arts, man, I'm not saying that. I, I can't express that. I can't articulate that without right. the arts. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. So, you know, thank you to like, you know, can I just say like, you know, uh, a list of thank yous to my people? Yeah. Thank Ron Shelton, Tom Hauser, Michael Mann, uh, and and definitely Rick Edelstein. Awesome. Rick Edelstein. And one more thank you. Uh, shit. Carol Gordon. <laughs> Carol Gordon. I'm going to be you looking know, up some of these folks. Okay. Well, Carol Gordon, I'm just, just like, just like, you know, not to belabor the point, but like Carol Gordon was my, was my writing coach in L.A. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, and she, like she was married to a buddy Mora, who was the uh, manager of um, of Robin Williams and a bunch of like wow. you know A list uh, wow. uh, actors, man, back in the days, man. So yeah, that's my uh, that's my um, that's my um, that's my um, shout name out. Drop. Thank wow. you. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs>
Well, yeah. I want to shout out. I want to shout out you for taking the time. I know you're busy, and and um, but you just have you're such a good person, and you have such a fascinating story. Thank you, brother. Um, yeah, I, I want to share. Oh, 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 yes, one, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, I have one more shout out. Yes, Mickey Dozy. Mickey Dozy, it is. Mickey Dozy. Mickey Dozy is the creator and director and producer of Netflix docu series. Oh, the Lo of losers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and yeah, everybody, please go watch that. It's it, all the episodes are amazing. And, uh, the, you know, they're only like a half hour each, but they're just, it's very compelling and very inspirational yeah. and gotcha. very just, I don't know, it's, it's full of heart and everything. And um, yeah. the way they did it was really neat with animation as well. Yeah. That's Mickey. He's brilliant, man. No, it's, it's a really, really cool, cool thing. Yeah. And I'd be remiss. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. I'd be remiss. If I didn't big up the Ken Burns team, Sarah Burns, David McMahon, and Ken Burns, thank you for like you know um, uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, be a part of the uh, Muhammad Ali docu series. Mm, that's yeah. awesome. Have you Brad, watched it? I have not. I, oh, I'm not. oh, 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 Brian, Brian! I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm a big fan of Ken Burns's work, and, and oh, I, dude. So where can I see it? Is it on PBS or? Yes, yeah, on PBS. Yeah, it's free. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, you may have to, um, is it still streaming? If you Google, like, you know, Ken Burns, Muhammad Ali docuseries, like, yep. you know, it'll come up. All right. I know yeah. it's on my list. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, my friend. Oh, thank uh, you, man. Yeah. And, and you this just keep, fun. no, yeah. And, you know, anytime you want to chat, you know where I'm at. And, and, you got uh, it. You got and, it. Uh, you just keep being you and, and, leaving your positive mark on the world. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for listening to The Creative Spark. To learn more about host G. Brian Benson, his latest best-selling book, Habits for Success, and this week's amazing guest, please visit the show notes. And we love building community, making new friends, and spreading the goodness. So don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and share it with your friends and family. Until next time, as Brian always says, be well, be creative, and always be yourself. Be yourself.